Hi there, Dr. Gary here, Dr. Gary on the road. Excuse the sunglasses, because it is super bright out here, even for New Jersey. So anyway, um, thank you for listening. Today's topic is going to be, and we are dental practice brokers nationwide. Today's topic is going to be zoning rules slowing the sale of a dental practice. And we'll get into the particulars, what happened in this one deal. I talked about this deal before, where they had this restriction for one dentist or something like that. Um, and it's it's a problem, you know. So we're going to talk about uh, what the story is. It's really nothing to worry about it's too much, but uh, the buyer must protect himself legally. So anyway... It's Dr. Gary on the road. We sell dental practices. We have eight employees, two CPA accountants, and we are nationwide now. We have 19 practices for sale from Maine to Florida, and we've been doing this for 11 years. I was a dentist for 25 years. So uh, call us anytime if you have questions. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. Our website is dentalpracticeguide.com. So go on there. We're available. Call us from 7.30 in the morning East Coast time to 9.30 p.m. East Coast time. We're always available for you. We work 365 days, 363 days a year. We take off Christmas and Easter. Besides that, we're available. Just give us a ring and we'll take care of everything for you. The information you're about to hear is uh, not legal advice, nor is it business advice. It's for entertainment only. All right, so here's what we have now on this zoning issue in selling a uh, in selling a dental practice. We previously mentioned we had a situation where a doctor had a certain zoning restriction. I think this one was only one dentist at a time or something like that, uh, which is ridiculous because on this street the doctor is in, there's uh, attorneys that have like four or five, six attorneys, all kinds of support staff. So I don't think it's very fair that they have this zoning restriction. But nonetheless, it is an issue. Now you can't gloss over it as a buyer. You have to have your attorney check it. Um, and I don't think after you buy the practice, which is more of a real estate purchase, anybody's really gonna come checking in your office. But a buyer is cautious. A buyer has to check it out. We told the buyer's attorney to get involved in it. We had full disclosure about this one dentist uh, clause. It says one dentist is only one dentist is supposed to be operating in the practice, but I think that could be interpreted in many different ways. And you have attorneys that are uh, have the associates in there practicing, so you can't restrict it to just, uh, you know, just say only the dental office. I'm sure the other ones uh, who don't have a variance or need a variance are doing this and have the same restriction. So it's something to think about. But anyway, it's slowing up the deal, the buyer's concern, and we're gonna see what we can do about it. Our attorney is her attorney, what they turn her on to, is checking with the real estate attorney to see what they can do. But the buyer is getting a little cold feet. I think it's unnecessary. I don't think it's gonna be a problem at all because I believe something like this is loosely interpreted. But you must get an attorney to check it out and see what the story is and find out. But that's something that what's that's going on right now, slowing up the sale of the deal. It's more of a real estate deal and the practice is almost given away for free, but you still have this clause and the doctor has to be sure of the clause. Um, and we're giving her the support that we believe it is not a problem at all, but she has to concur with her attorney and, uh, and go from there, all right? So some things to be aware of all the time. It's always a different situation. Thank you.